What's up, everyone? We're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shaw. Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare plus dermatology by popular demand. These were the top two of the top three sunscreens that have been popular on social media by popular demand, not by me. So we're going to be talking about them. All right. And we're branching out a little bit. So I think we talked about this. I don't We've talked about this at some point, but they were Korean sunscreens, actually, that were two of the most similar and two of the most wanted. So we're going to delve into that world a little bit today. All right. So we are talking about sunblock? <laughs> I don't know. So two popular Korean sunscreens. We're talking about the Isentry Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel versus Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice Plus Probiotic SPF 50 Plus. So good news. I actually have been using both of these for about two months now consistently. So not only will we have the objective portion of this, but we'll also have some subjective anecdote to come alongside of it. Okay, so we're going to compare them head to head. Here we go. Here we go. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Korean sunscreens first. Okay, so the South Korean skincare cosmetic market really leads the way globally for products. So a lot of times you see a lot of products that come out there first and then they're spread into the US market. So really the leaders here. Now, caveat with any Korean sunscreen, the filters that are being used are not approved by the FDA in the United States. And so these filters are not considered to be safe and effective or generally regarded as safe and effective by the US Food and Drug Administration. And so that means that of course, you have to be with some level of caution when you're using this. There was a scandal. And you say that, and I happen to have the revamped non-scandal version right here. We had the Purito scandal last year where they said that the SPF that was stated on the bottle didn't match up to the SPF that was done in independent testing. And so, of course, you have to be a little bit careful with any product, whether it's in the U.S., because we have our own set of scandals. We had the benzene scandal last year. And so that shouldn't really preclude you, but just be aware that these things may not match up. I will say with the beauty of Joseon, they double tested it at two different labs as a result of this. And maybe it's a good thing that's led to more scrutiny. So overall, the Korean sunscreens are really amazing sunscreens. Both of these are chemical filter based sunscreens. They don't have the mineral based sunscreens um, from these two. And that means that they usually tend to absorb very well. So first up, we're going to be reviewing the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. So we'll give you one finger length here. Now one finger length for half the face, including the neck and the ears. Very watery, I would argue, just like the watery sun gel. Okay, for me, it stings a little bit. Yeah, I, it doesn't sting my skin. I don't know if you have a, just a damaged skin barrier from something else right now, but. I did just recently start using my Tretinoin again. Okay, that, and that, that's actually a common thing I think people experience. So sometimes your skin barrier is damaged and it may not necessarily be the thing you're using right now. It may be a combination of everything you're doing in life. Definitely like a lightweight type of lotion. Blends well with the beard, I think not common for a lot of sunscreens. Very difficult to get into the beard. Very true. But this is a chemical combination sunscreen, which do a lot better. So this does have a lot of beneficial ingredients. So it can double as a moisturizer and also bring some of those antioxidant effects. So it's got your niacinamide in it. It's got your Centella Asiatica, which is calming and soothing. It also has your glycerin. It has your hyaluronic acid. It also has your ceramide, which is one of my favorite lipids for helping to repair and restore the skin barrier. So a lot of beneficial ingredients. Now let's talk about the actual sunscreen filters that are in them. This one has two major sunscreen ingredients. Again, these are the Korean sunscreens. This is methyl bis. No, I got this. Calm down. This is methylene bis benzotriazolyl. <laughs> All right, methylene bis benzotriazolyl tetramethyl butyl phenol. So this is known by the trade name of Tinosorb M. So commonly used sunscreen overseas. Now this one does contain decal glucoside, which has been linked as a common cause of contact dermatitis or allergic reactions. This is also one in the one from Beauty by Joseon, but just be aware that it has been linked to contact dermatitis. So if you're noticing irritation or allergy from either of these two products, it's probably the decal glucoside that's in that. So this one is also like very photostable. It's also broad spectrum. So this ingredient alone does cover UVB, UVA very well and it doesn't need other, other ingredients just to help it function and be stable. Now, the other major sunscreen ingredient in this sounds a little similar, but it's, okay, ready? This ethyl hexaloxyl phenol methoxyphenyl triazine. Oh, you nailed that one. <laughs> so this one, again, broad spectrum UVA, UVB coverage. Um, so important, that's how you get that PA++ protection, plus you get that 50 plus um, UVB protection as well. So you're gonna be protected against the sun as long as their lab testing is accurate. Um, but the question is, how does 
does it feel on the skin? Right. And so that's our objective portion. Is it SPF? Yeah, it has good SPFs in it. Um, subjectively, you know, I really like it. It's extremely hydrating, just like a lightweight face lotion. Now the name says gel. It's not a gel in my opinion. Like if there is a true gel out there, there are true gels, there are gel lotions. This is like a true watery lotion to me. Overall, I kind of like the way that it makes my skin look. Not my favorite texture overall, but we'll compare it to the one from Beauty by Josie on that. So next up is another very popular. I actually think this one might be even more popular. Beauty by Joseon Relief Sun Rice Press Probiotic, same SPF protection. So same in protection wise compared between the two. One finger length. This one's a thicker sunscreen. I can tell you that right now. Not as water. Oh, it's running. You're running down. No, I lied. I lied immediately. I was immediately <laughs> wrong. Immediately no. It smells like vanilla icing a little bit. It does have a scent to it. Okay, that's weird. This one's actually irritating me right here. I wonder if I've traumatized that area of my skin somehow. I've worn this a lot. It's not. It's not actually been a problem for me before. It's just you know you damage your skin barrier from retinoids or exfoliating, and I've worn this quite a bit over the last couple months. Similar consistency, actually. Mm -hmm. Very similar consistency. I think it goes on a little heavier. I think your initial inclination was right. Uh, looking at you, <laughs> your initial inclination was definitely right. Go on a little bit thicker. <laughs> <laughs> Stinging me a little bit as well. I think you're right. I think I have a little bit of an impaired skin barrier right now. Yeah, I don't know if you all can see this. Am but I white right now? There's a definitely value to doing this in front of a mirror in the morning. <laughs> Missed a couple spots. So let's talk about some of the ingredients in this one. So I think the similarities as far as ingredients are some notable ones because we've often talked about L to MD as being a cornerstone for that niacinamide, sneaking a niacinamide into your SPF to consolidate products. Both of them have niacinamide and it could be that niacinamide in your skincare routine. So I like that about both of them. This one also has Centella Asiatica as a complement to antioxidant um, and soothing ingredient. And then it also has glycerin, which can make it a hydrating product. I think a little bit less so than the watery sun gel, um, but the overall vehicle is a little thicker that may help offset some of that. For our sunscreen filters in this one, you have ethyl hexyl triazone, diethyl amino hydroxy benzyl hexyl benzoate, Dang. diethyl hexyl butamido triazone, and methylene bis benzyl triazole tetramethyl butyl phenol. And that's again, they have the Tinosaurus M in this one. Um, they have broad spectrum coverage. Um, and so again, the decoglucoside can cause allergic reactions in some people, but it's going to offer you really broad spectrum spectrum, UVA and UVB coverage. What was your highest score on your MCAT? Which subject? <laughs> Actually, physics. Oh, mine was reading. All right, yeah. just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, I think um, they're gonna offer you protection. They both have added ingredients that are beneficial. They both don't leave a white cast. I would say the beauty of Josian is a little bit thicker, more of like a heavier lotion. And the one from Isentry is more of a lighter lotion. Ah, which one do you like better? For me, because I, oh gosh. So this was my problem actually all, all along. I used them all almost interchangeably. They both fill the space for that lightweight moisturizing SPF with niacinamide. I kind of like the Beauty of Joseon one a little bit better for me. I like the Isentry one a little better, but it's, it's probably the same reason, right? I think this one is a little bit lighter. The Isentry, I think it's a little lighter. Fair enough. So we have not been very helpful with sunscreen wars so far. Both of these sunscreens are a good option overall and will offer you adequate sun protection and at the same time, not leave you with a white cast and encourage you to wear sunscreen because you're not feeling like you have something heavy on your skin, not something that's leaving a film and not something that's going to really be a burden for you as far as putting sunscreen on, which for a lot of people, they have trouble with the sunscreens. Exactly. And so I think that's even though we disagree, we agree to disagree because these have the same role, right? These are both that lightweight moisturizing niacinamide SPF that you can reapply seamlessly, blendlessly throughout the day and make it a part of your routine easily. And then like we always say, sunscreen screens come down to preference, right? So he likes things a little bit dewier. He loves like greasy, oily, nasty things on his face. I like more matte. And so I think there's always that split where each person just has that little bit of difference that makes something more favorable than another. And it tends to be, it tends to be subjective things. Uh, what do you call that? No. Preference? Preference. It definitely comes down to preference. We'll link some of those products below so you can check them out. But maybe we should just make like obvious losers for the next one. Yeah, just bring in a third one that's just <laughs> obviously <laughs> horrible. Bad, like straight up bad. <laughs> But yeah, no, both of these are great sunscreens. I think that you'll be happy with them. I think actually the, if we're going to say, isn't tree actually smells a little bit better. I, I didn't like really the smell of the Josie on yeah, one. Yeah, I think so it's true too. If 
that matters to you, then I guess the scent is a little bit weird for jo the beauty of Josian. Yeah, I think it's as fair. far as price goes, they're pretty similar. Um, depending on where you get them, about eighteen dollars, eighteen to twenty dollars, uh, decent size. So not an overly expensive sunscreen. Um, either one, I think they're actually pretty affordable. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know which one you want to compare next because we definitely took your suggestions for this one. So which sunscreens do you want us to compare next in Sunscreen Wars? We'll see you in the next video. See you next time.